Good morning, uh, Fort Alliance, Fort Saskatchewan, and our extended digital online family. We're so glad you're with us that you've chosen um, to just gather as the church via Holy Spirit in our homes through this means. We welcome you here today. Uh, if you're new or a guest or visiting, we'd love to get to know you, and the best way you could do that for us is to just go to our website, fortsaskalliance.com. Click the uh, online gatherings uh, page or tab there, and then from there you'll see an online connection card. You just fill that out and it will come right to us, and we'd love to get to know you and just welcome you to our family. Hey, while I got everybody here, this is so important. We want you to hear this. We are going to make it through this season of COVID-19 together, and at Fort Alliance, we want you to know that we're here to help if you need help. Um, we have this program we've started called Runners, and it too can be found on our website and we have runners available to run errands or to, to run and pick up uh, any needs that you may have in the season. So if you need physical help by someone running an errand, please let us know and use our website to do that. Or if you need physical help, if you need some groceries or just basic needs, we're here to help you and we want to do that. Um, we've got finances, we've got volunteers in place, we're gonna make it together. And so please know it is our heartfelt desire to help you, to help our community uh, in this season. Uh, that's possible because so many of you have given in this season. We want you to know we appreciate that. Again, we say thank you to those of you who have given, and uh, you can continue uh, to do that via the website as well using our, our giving tab on our, our website. As a means of just bringing you up to speed on, on some of the decisions we, we made this week, uh, we have all heard the news of the flood in Fort Mac. And I mean, there is no good time for something like this to happen, but especially in a season like this, our heart breaks for our brothers, our sisters, our friends in Fort Mac, and uh, from one fort to another, we want to help. And so um, as elders, we just processed what could be a tangible way we could help out Fort Mac in this season. And so we chose to uh, uh, give 10% uh, of our um, um, income, that what was given to us uh, in the month of April to Fort Mac um, this week. And so that's something we've done, and we wanted you to be aware that we have, have done that because we want to be available uh, to help. Uh, we did that by giving to Fort City Church. It's our sister alliance church there, and they're ensuring that every dollar that they receive goes directly to flood relief in their community. And so we're so glad to partner um, with our, our brothers and sisters and our sister church, uh, Fort City Church, at this time. And I, I just feel like it's appropriate for us to just slow down and just pray for Fort Mac in this season. So why don't you join me in that as, as we uh, just begin our service together. Father God, we come before you and in a season where we just globally are in need of mercy and in need of your healing hand, we specifically think of brothers and sisters, friends, family um, in Fort Mac as they've been impacted by this devastating flood um, in this season. Lord God, we just pray that you would just bring peace to their hearts, to their minds, that you would go before them, that you would bring um, just the, a heart and a spirit of your presence in and through that community. We pray for the local church there. We pray for Fort City Church and the other local churches, that you would just use them in this season, that you would give them an abundance, a fresh filling of Holy Spirit fire to just be your servants, to be your ministers in this season. And God, for those in that community that are hurting, that are broken, that just feel lost and alone, God, may they sense you and know you now. In Jesus' name we pray for them. Amen. This is a, a good way to actually segue this next uh, a song we want to play for you. Um, you can join by singing along or you can just sit and meditate, but we came across this song this week and I think it's going to be reflective of how many of us are feeling and what many of us are processing in this season of COVID-19. So may you be blessed uh, by the lyrics of Even Now.
an amazing song. We serve a God that is so big and so wonderful. And as believers, we want to tell as many people as possible about this amazing God that we serve. And that brings me to Alpha and Discipleship Explored. Alpha is an amazing place, a no, a no pressure zone to explore what it means uh, to follow Jesus, to ask the questions that you have about faith. And if you know someone who could benefit from that, I want to encourage you uh, to be praying and asking God about the best way to invite them to that. And we're going to watch a little video about Alpha right now. Perfect. Yes. We all have that person in our lives. That neighbor we pass by every day outside our homes. That coworker we see at the office five days a week. Or those friends we catch up with every once in a while. People we wish could know and experience the love of God. How do we share it? Where do we even start? Deep inside, we know that it'll cost us something to open up our lives and share our faith. It takes time, vulnerability, sacrifice, the risk of rejection. But this is our call, to open our lives and to share Christ with the people close to us. Because it's only through opening your life up that spaces for honest conversations are possible. Spaces where people can truly be themselves and explore the deepest parts of life with people they know and trust. That's why we're running Alpha. It's a course over several weeks where you can invite your friends to explore life's biggest questions over a meal. It's a chance for you to invite that person into an honest conversation about faith. Because when it's hard to find the moment, or the words, or the courage, you can simply invite. Alpha, who will you invite? The next opportunity that I want to talk about is Discipleship Explored. Uh, if you have a relationship with Jesus and you're wondering what's next, or if you have a friend uh, who is a new Christian and they're looking at uh, into more of what it means to follow Jesus, uh, to be a disciple of Christ. Discipleship Explored is a wonderful opportunity. So we're going to watch a video about that right now. Imagine being told to dance when you can't hear the music. We teach people all the right moves, go to church, read the Bible, pray, share the gospel. And having taught people those moves, we expect them to be able to dance. But very often, they can't hear the music that drives it all. That's why we created Discipleship Explored. The series is based on Paul's letter to the Philippians. It's perfect for small groups or one-to-ones. There are eight sessions which take you through Philippians full of real-life stories about how Jesus changes people and full of provocative questions to help followers of Jesus hear the music of the gospel, the greatest love we've ever known. That's Discipleship Explored. It's our way of turning up the music so excited about both Alpha and Discipleship Explored. They are starting May 7th at 7 o'clock. If you or someone you know are interested in joining either one of those groups, you can contact Pastor Ken or myself and you can do so through our website. I also want to talk to you about our prayer meetings that are coming up for May. We're doing something new. We want to invite you to be praying with our staff. So on May 12th and 26th, 
at 1030. Uh, we're inviting you to join us via Zoom for a prayer time with our staff, and we're so excited about that. So now we're going to head on over to Bruce, and he is going to be praying for our country, uh, for our community, for our church. Good morning, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bruce, Bruce Peters, and typically as we gather as Fort Saskatchewan Lions Church, I'd like to be the one that's leading you in a couple songs, songs of worship, songs of uh, dedication, but just to uh, join our voices together and really honor God. But this morning, I just want to take some time to pray with you and to pray for our church and pray for our community. So why don't you join me? Heavenly Father, we just want to come before you this morning. Lord, as I reflect upon our country of Canada, Lord, there's just a lot of things that are going on, and we need you to be the inspiration in all of our leaders. Lord, we know there's things that are taking place that we personally don't agree with, but God, you told us that we should uphold the leadership. And so this morning, I want to do that. Be with everyone that has the power to make rules and regulations for Canada, to make appropriate decisions, appropriate choices that will not just benefit us, but that will look after us and look after this country in the way that we should. Heavenly Father, I'm also so very, very thankful for our community. Fort Saskatchewan, it is such a beautiful place. And the people of Fort Saskatchewan are truly trying their very best to handle the situations of today. Be with them. Help us all, God, as we come together in these places of six feet apart that we will respect each other. But more importantly, God, that we would encourage each other. That we'd lift each other up. Put a smile on. We're all in this together. And we want to just encourage each other. That's going to be a much easier way to get through this. And Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful also for just Fort Saskatchewan Alliance Church. How our leadership from Pastor Ken and Pastor Ashley, Pam, Darcy, Candace. Our staff is amazing. And how they continue to pull together that which needs to be pulled together to bring these services to not only our church family, but also to those in the community and to those around the world. God, it's amazing how through all this, that you are allowing us to touch so many more people than what we normally would on a Sunday morning. Continue to bless us, God, as we continue to reach out to those. Give us the heart that loves one another. Be with us now, God, on this Sunday as we just continue to enjoy the beauty of what you have created and as we watch things begin to sprout and grow. Thank you, God. Amen. Jesus' very last act on earth is also one of his most puzzling. He ascends into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. On the surface, the ascension appears to show Christ leaving our world. But if we see the ascension resulting in less of Jesus' presence instead of more, then we are missing out on a powerful truth about the ascended Jesus. When Jesus encounters Mary Magdalene after his resurrection, she throws her arms around him. She had lost him once, and she would never lose him again. But Jesus says to her, Don't hold on to me, Mary, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. 
One could assume that Jesus is saying this because his resurrected body is sacred. But later, Jesus invites Thomas to touch his wounds, so that can't be the case. Jesus knew the fear that Mary felt, thinking she had lost him forever. So through his reply, Jesus is saying, If you let go, if you let me ascend, you'll have access to an even stronger relationship with me. Mary, the way I am right now, there's a chance you could lose me. But if I ascend to the Father, you will have me forever and nothing will ever be able to take me away from you. His presence would come through the Holy Spirit, who is not merely a force, but a person who would come in his place. Jesus said, unless I go away, the advocate will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. And one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Christ to us. This is why Jesus said that through the Holy Spirit, he would finally show himself to his disciples. The implication is that the disciples did not and could not truly know Jesus until he went away bodily and returned through the Holy Spirit, which is encouraging for us to see because you might be under the impression that if only you could have lived and walked with Jesus, that you would know him better than you do now. But you'd be wrong. Before Jesus died, the Holy Spirit had not been released into the world in this powerful way. And you can only know Jesus fully through the Spirit's influence, as He shows you in the shadow of the cross how high and long and wide and deep His love is for us. In other words, through the Holy Spirit, you can see Christ and know His presence and His love better than the apostles on the night of the Lord's Supper. So the inevitable question is, are you living like this is true? Are you living like Christ is more accessible now than he was when he walked the earth? Jesus has made his intentions clear. He left heaven and all of his glory for your sake. And through his ascension, he has made himself infinitely available to you. Christ has drawn near to you. So draw near to Him. So here we are, um, week number two in our mini-series, Not a Ghost, Holy Spirit is a Person. It is really just us taking time to focus on that which doesn't change, particularly in this season where everything seems to be changing daily around us. These are uh, the big 11 that we're going to be looking at, uh, the, the, the key things that we hold to as those who follow Jesus, who are His church. It's our statement of faith. And so point three is that the Holy Spirit is a divine person, and we're taking time to process that, uh, I hear this morning, a little bit further. Uh, last week, hopefully you caught that, I talked about two camps that far too often um, are a part of our church, or not just our church, the church uh, today. It's that camp on, on one hand, that's kind of like the wingnut charismatic camp, and then on the other, sort of the grumpy, staunch, conservative camp, and I processed that a little bit more, but really what it boiled down to is this, that Jesus said true worship will come, the worship in spirit and truth, and I believe with all my heart that today, our generation, more than ever, needs a church that's walking in spirit and truth. And we need to further step into this um, and better walk with and know and have relationship and experience with Holy Spirit as we do so. That said, you've uh, heard me many times before. I came from this camp, that, that conservative camp, where we, yeah, we knew Holy Spirit was the third part of the Trinity, but we rarely spoke of him and, and never really interacted with him. And so that's shaped much of my experience and, and, the, and really shapes this, this story I want to tell you to begin. For me, it goes back a little over 10 years ago when I received the call to my first um, lead pastor position. 
In my life and in my journey, I had actually found that God consistently threw me into the deep end um, when I wasn't experienced enough or educated enough. He just kind of threw me into leadership roles and said, okay, go for it. And more often than not, um, via grace and just his gifting of, uh, of leadership with, to me, I was able to kind of process that and work through that, make it through whatever it was. But I mean, just, man, about a year, maybe almost two years in, I found myself in this place where I knew I was lacking. I just didn't have what it took to be the lead pastor that, never mind that God wanted, that even just I simply wanted to be. It was in this season that, uh, man, I I gained like 50 pounds. I stress eat. That's something that I I got issue with. 50 pounds fast. um, And simple daily activities like just walking up the stairs to, to play with my boys or what have you would make my heart just race, like abnormally race within me. I found myself really concerned. I went to see my doctor. And said, hey, um, you know, I, I put on this weight. I know that's my fault, but my heart's doing some weird stuff. You want to just check that out and, and talk that over with me? And um, in process with my doctor, he just basically said it like this. Look, you, you're stressing yourself out. You've got um, blood pressure right now that is way too high for someone who's barely 30. Um, you got to get some things under control. And he prescribed a bunch of meds. Now, Long story short, I never did actually take those meds. I started to take some action in my life physically to deal with some stuff. Um, But I realized via some divine encounters with certain people, as well as certain books, um, that these physical manifestations of eating and weight and heart racing and blood pressure were really just um, a... a a telling of the spiritual state of where I was at and what I was lacking. What I, what I mean by that is, for much of my life, as sincere as I was, as genuine as I was, um, I was serving and ministering in my own strength as opposed to God's strength. And I knew verses that said things like, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in you, but I ha- I hadn't or wasn't quite yet walking in that. I knew that Jesus, in fact, said things like, um, you'll do even greater things than I, and yet I haven't re- hadn't experienced an iota of that, and I wanted just at least a fraction of it. And so I began this journey with God and with his word and with others processing my need for Holy Spirit power and really, for the first time, meeting the person of the Holy Spirit. In that season early on, I had this one wild experience that I want to share with you. And, and you need to know, I can't even um, actually fully explain this, this experience theologically to you today. I, I just simply could tell you what happened, and I can understand parts and some of it, but it really is just evidence for me that Jesus is good and kind, and even when I don't have all the answers, he's at work and moving and ministering in his people and in his body and his church which is a great point to kind of actually help segue me in in that I want you to know I'm not here this morning as one who perfectly understands and can articulate everything that it means to know the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm really just a person in process, trying to get to know Holy Spirit better. And I would rather be a person in the process and just be honest about that with you today, knowing that I have experienced um, fresh filling Um, fresh fire even, if you will, from Holy Spirit, then going back to me being in my late 20s thinking I knew all the answers about Holy Spirit and lacking all of his power. So I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to share the story and begin to bring out uh, some of what I've come to learn um, from Scripture this morning. So the story goes like this. This is about eight years ago. I got two little boys, and I'm camping in the summer um, with good friends of us at their seasonal uh, lake site. And we had both had young kids, and so we'd put them to bed, and we were at our own sites, so they were at their campsite, uh, we were at, at ours, and, and Janelle and I were just having a fire uh, late at night visiting while our kids were sleeping. And in the course of our visiting, uh, we heard these 
horrible, deathly um, sounding screams from a woman down the road. We knew instantly something was, was wrong. It, you, you couldn't mistake it. And so I jumped up from my seat and, and I began to go and Janelle called out, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm going to help. Someone's in trouble. You say a prayer. So down I went, running down this road. I'm getting to the, the, the sound of the screams. And as I came there, I quickly realized that three other men had beat me there and they were trying to hold back someone who was demonically manifesting in that moment and they were not doing a good job at it. This man was looking to... Um, in some way or somehow harm this woman that was uh, across the deck of, of this particular campsite. Remember, I'm at the very beginning of this, this journey, knowing that I want to experience more of Jesus' um, uh, grace upon me, more of his uh, giving and filling of the Holy Spirit. I know barely anything. I hadn't taken in a training session on um, uh, demons, I haven't taken in training on casting out demons, nothing. I just see this going on and it's unmistakable, this man is manifesting. I quickly run up the stairs, I stand like this far apart from him and I just look him in the eye. I, and within moments, this is what happened, boom, he just dropped. I didn't do nothing. I didn't say nothing. I didn't know what to do. He just simply fell to the ground as I stood there across from him. I stepped back myself thinking like, mm, that was weird. I walked down the stairs, kind of head back to meet with Janelle, and I just sat there like processing what just took place. Because we were at my, my friend's uh, seasonal site, they had a number of people come up to them the next day saying, like, who's this guy you brought? What does he do? What, what happened there? And they were just like, I don't know, ask him. And so people would come up to me the next day. What, what do you do? What happened? I was like, I don't know. And they said, well, thanks for coming. And I was like, yeah, I had no idea. Here's what I've come to learn. Jesus is oh so good and kind. And when we just show up with a desire for more of Holy Spirit, he begins to move and work, even if we perhaps haven't bit figured out how to theologically perfectly unpack it yet. I'm fully convinced that day in that park or in that campsite some eight years ago, it had nothing to do with me. Nothing. But in that moment, Jesus in me via the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit just showed up and dealt with what needed to be dealt with in an instant. This is how good and kind Jesus is. He gives us, his church, Holy Spirit power for when we need it, including such a time as this that we face today. And I really believe that we're going to see a little bit more of that uh, in our text today. So we're going to go to John uh, chapter 16 and uh, process that together. I actually have invited uh, uh, Noah Saxton to, to read for us. Uh, he's reading from Australia of all places as he uh, takes in Cape and Ray uh, Bible uh, classes in school. So we're going to turn it over to him and he's going to read for us. Good morning, Fort Saskatchewan Alliance Church. Noah here coming to you from Cape Henry, Australia. Um, Pastor Cannon asked me if I could read a couple verses for you guys. And so here I am. If you guys would like to join me in flipping to John chapter 16, we're going to be reading verses 5 to 15 in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> but now I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for me that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. 
Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you of the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Thank you, guys. Um, stay safe. Hey, thanks so much, Noah. We really appreciate you uh, joining us uh, uh, this morning and reading for us. It's, it's great to uh, have our family see you again as you were on the other side of the world in a, in a season like this. It's cool we can do stuff like that. Uh, so Noah uh, read for us the passage that I wanna, want us to get into. Now, before I get into it, I, I can't fully speak to um, 5 to, to 15 this morning without just saying this. Um, it's super important that, that you take some time to, to read through 1 through 5 as well. Uh, and, and the reason being is because in 1 through 5, Jesus speaks to the reality that his people, his followers, his church is going to go through difficulties. And not just difficulties, they're going to go through persecution and even death for following him. And yet in the midst of those difficulties, this persecution, this, this death, there's no reason to fear because he's going to send Holy Spirit, another advocate, which is what we're getting into today. And so church history has shown this to be true. And in fact, even around the world today, we see this to be true. But this brings so much peace to me in the midst of this season of COVID-19. Because although we are not experiencing uh, persecution and um, death from persecution in the church in Canada, it is difficult. But in the difficulty, we never have to wonder if we'll be okay or if God is with us, because Jesus has said, I give you Holy Spirit, and he is with us. Which is actually important to understanding 5 to 15, uh, because scholars, for the most part, will tell you that verses 5 to 15 of chapter uh, 16 in the, in the Gospel of John is written specifically for the church and in that the church has been given the Holy Spirit and thus ministers and partners with the Holy Spirit in the work that is outlined in, in the verses that, that we just read. It, not only does this come out of this understanding of, the, of one to five, but that really technical uh, word that I left you with last week, y'all, is used here as well. Jesus makes it really clear that it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, I will send him to y'all. This is a passage for the church, for us, the followers, the gathering of Jesus' people today. Holy Spirit has been given to us for such a time as this. He is here with us and, and he is looking to lead, empower, guide us in every season, but I believe specifically in this season for such a time as this. Now, as I, I've shared already via short Devo, I, I bring up again, there's a season in my life, most of my life in fact, where I mean, I believed what Jesus said here. I mean, he said it, it had to be true. But I, it wasn't really my experience. I believed, like he said, okay, it's better for you that I go, but man, really? I mean, wouldn't it be great if Jesus was right here right now, or even he just sitting here in this chair, and I was here, and I could just interview him on this? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, don't get me wrong, that would be really awesome. Uh, but Jesus is clear, it's better that I go. Because if I go, I will send the Holy Spirit. And so we can take confidence in this reality in fact, I've grown to experience a closer walk with Jesus via Holy Spirit in me, through me, around me. And he, Holy Spirit, is available to us, Jesus' church, even in days such as these. 
Now, as we read, uh, Jesus specifically says when he, referring to the Holy Spirit, comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Now, again, remember what I started off with, that uh, scholars would have us um, understand this as recognizing this Holy Spirit working with and ministering through the church in the midst of this, this reality, that Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. But so as to not leave us confused, thank goodness, Jesus unpacks that a little bit further for us. Verse 9 reads like this. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Hey, if you're here this morning, and you have joined us just desperately pleading with God, for hope to make it to tomorrow, this is why you tuned in right here, this verse. Jesus has said the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of its sin, and its sin is that it doesn't believe in him, it doesn't believe in Jesus. The flip side of this is this. Jesus, as we've processed throughout the Easter season, truly is both God and man. And he's come because he loves you. And put aside all the legalistic terms and lists and morals and ethics and all those things, at its simplest level, Jesus is communicating that the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin, and our sin is that we've refused to believe in Jesus. That's like I said, the flip side is that Jesus has come so that you might know God. He's come so that all those lists, all those things um, that so many have, have named in the past could be dealt with, finished, even better, forgiven, freed. Jesus did that by coming to the cross and taking on all of our sin, your sin. He came and he ensured that the punishment that sin brought, death, would be dealt with. And so that death through sin would no longer reign, but instead, just as Jesus rose from the dead, life in you might reign. See, God has never walked away from you, even in this season where you feel alone. It's been our sin. It's been our wicked thoughts, our our evil ways, our, our addictive tendencies, all those things that we have followed that have led us away. But Jesus did not want to leave us like that. He came to bring us back. And in experiencing his forgiveness via faith, we come back to relationship with God. Jesus has come for you. And to put your faith in him begins a relationship with God where hope where peace, where joy is available, this side of heaven for you right now, even as you sit completely isolated on your own. And this journey with God, it just begins by simply saying and crying out to Jesus, saying, Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, my life is yours. The hope, the peace, the joy you're looking for is found in Jesus. Allow Holy Spirit to work in you to bring that to life. Because God wants relationship with you. You were created for that. The next verse uh, reads like this. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Now, the word righteousness simply means being made right with God. That righteousness, being made right with God, 
is available because I, Jesus speaking, goes to the Father. This is so cool. Holy Spirit has come to convict us of that, to convince us of that, to, to, to work in us to understand that more fully. And again, this is all linked to what Jesus is about to do. This passage, as I mentioned last week, is like the eve before he's about to be crucified. See, Jesus is about to finish the work he had come to do to ensure that we could be made right with God, that we could walk with him. And this righteousness is available through faith, but it, it, it is, we know it is possible because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Because he's alive. Holy Spirit has come to convince the world that we could be made right with God. This is possible because Jesus has finished the work he came to do. Now, on this next thought on this verse, you don't have to agree with me. I'm totally okay with it. But in my opinion, I think for far too often, um, within the church in Canada at least, we focus so much on what's wrong in the world that we miss the point of being a part of declaring what's right. And Jesus has ensured that righteousness is available because he finished the work and he ascended into heaven and now he leaves us, the church, to declare that good news, that righteousness is available. And Holy Spirit allows us to use you and I as the church to be a part of this message of what is right, that God has made a way for us to allow others to be made right with him. And then the last, or the third part of this uh, little section, Jesus unpacks this idea of the Holy Spirit coming to convict the world of judgment, and he does so by saying this, judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. Oh, I like this. I love how Jesus unpacks this. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. Let me go back to my story at the very beginning. I'm telling you, it was not me that stood there in that moment. It was as if Jesus showed up and Satan knew it. The ruler of the world had been judged and he had to fall in that moment. And our world needs a church filled, empowered, led by the Spirit, by Holy Spirit, as we process the hurts, the pains, the brokenness that we all have experienced. The enemy, Satan, all too well wants to be known all too often shows his true colors this side of heaven, that he is a liar, and that he's come to steal and to kill and to destroy. And as a result, he looks to cripple us, to cripple his church, by just so maliciously reminding us of all our faults, all our weaknesses, all that's wrong. Bringing a sense of guilt, shame, leaving us in this place of feeling like we're powerless. As the liar that he is who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he knows our names. He knows your name. But he calls you by your sin to leave you in that place of a lack of power. But God, and all of his goodness, he knows our sin. But via faith in Christ and the forgiveness and the freedom and the healing and the wholeness that comes through relationship with Jesus, but God, he, he knows our sin, 
but he calls us by our name. And he has called us in a season like this as he always has intended to be his church. Sent to not just stand and sit back, but to be the, gate, the, the forceful battering ram that bashes the gates of hell down in days even like this, that ministers on his behalf, that partners with Holy Spirit in the convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And he longs to use us in this season. Holy Spirit is a person and he's come to empower and to fill us in a fresh and in a new way so that we could live for, so that that we could serve God in a power that is not our own. In fact, as you um, keep reading um, in this passage, 12 to 17, talks a little bit more about that. And interestingly enough, I read something that I think so perfectly describes um, our day, our era today. The author wrote this about the spirit who has come to guide in 12 to 15. says, without a guide, wilderness landscapes are often seemingly devoid of reality. And in so many of ways, doesn't it feel like COVID-19 has brought us to this wilderness landscape. But when you ponder the image of the Spirit, as we see here, we remember the significance of a guide into unknown territories, including territories like COVID-19 and today. We have a guide looking to lead his church for such a time as this. Again, I'm so convinced I want to pray with you right now that Holy Spirit might lead you to whom he needs to lead you to, to be a minister, to be a servant, to be used for the advancement of Jesus' kingdom. Now, real quick before I do, I joined with you last week as I prayed, and I had someone's names put on my heart, and I followed up. I got the voicemail, so I left the message. They didn't call me back. Now, don't get me wrong, I want them to, I'm still hoping they do, but I was just obedient. And it's okay to have those moments where you feel like, all right, I'm being obedient, but what next, they they haven't got back. Just leave it with God, trust them. But there are gonna be those of us who in our obedience have opportunity to reap harvest because seed somewhere else along the line has been sown. And so let's listen to Holy Spirit now and ask him to lead and guide. He is the third person in the Trinity and he's here to empower his church, you right here, right now, from your homes amidst, amidst this season. So you bow with me in prayer as we ask Holy Spirit to lead and guide. Father, thank you for sending Jesus Oh, how we desperately needed that saving grace through him alone. Jesus, thank you for sending Holy Spirit. Oh, how we need him to lead and guide us today. And so Holy Spirit, I just sincerely come to you right now in this moment and pray for my brothers and my sisters in their homes. Lord God, right here, In this place, we pray you would lead and guide us to where you would have us go for the advancement of your kingdom. Holy Spirit, would you be so specific as to right now put a name on the hearts of those listening of who they're to follow up with. Thank you, Spirit. Now, as the Apostle Paul prayed, Give us boldness. Give us courage to step out in obedience. We trust you. We surrender to you, Spirit. Lead and guide us. Amen. Fort Alliance, you're created for such a time as this. You have Holy Spirit available to you. Jesus promised it. He's with you now. So wash your hands and go wash someone's feet. I love you and I miss you. God bless.
Friends, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, it is such a pleasure and a privilege to still be able to gather together, uh, even if it is from our own homes. God is with us, and he is present through his Holy Spirit, uh, active in those who believe in Jesus. And so just want to, again, encourage you to be asking the Holy Spirit who he wants you to invite uh, to Alpha, to Discipleship Explored, uh, who he's put in your path for you to be telling them about the good news of Jesus. Also wanted to mention that at 11 o'clock, our prayer rooms are going to be open. You can head on over to our website, fortsaskalliance.com, hit the online gatherings tab, and go into the room that uh, applies to your last name. And Pastor Ken or myself would love to be praying for you. So this week, friends, my prayer for you is that you will feel the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, that he would be drawing you closer to Jesus, and that you would be experiencing his peace and his joy. Go with peace, friends.